Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Guy Fishman, and this is my friend and colleague, Ian Watson. It's a pleasure to be in this extraordinary hall. We've had the privilege of playing here several times before, and it's always a joy to come back. 
It's raining behind us, the sea is roaring, perfect weather to make this music. We wanted to present a program on period instruments. That is to say that while this cello looks similar to any other cello you've seen, it is set up in a way that we believe the composers of this music might have been familiar with, and therefore the sounds that it makes are the sounds that they would have been familiar with. And of course, the harpsichord is an early instrument. <clears throat> this one happens to be a replica. Uh, mine is quite original. It is from 1704. And the idea of this program arose from a question, which is, what happened between those first compositions that we know of for the cello as a solo instrument, because it took a while for this instrument to be recognized as a viable purveyor of virtuoso and expressive music. It was usually relegated to just accompanimental roles. So what happened between those first pieces and when this instrument was made in Rome in 1704? And of course, this is the period before giants like Bach composed those six great unaccompanied suites, and Vivaldi wrote those wonderful six sonatas. So what did cellists get to play? And the answer is those first four pieces that we played for you. Those are the very first music that we have for, for solo cello and unaccompanied cello. They were written, three of them, by Domenico Gabrielli, no relation to the great Gabrielli's of, uh, of Venice. And they were written in Bologna, and that's, uh, that's a very important detail. And my colleague loves this following story, so I'm going to tell it again. Uh, the cello, like all stringed instruments, was strung with gut strings from its invention, essentially, in the 1550s up until the 20th century. So all four strings were made of gut, of sheep intestine, the same material that your tennis rackets were strung with in the 1920s, or if you got a cut and had to have a suture, that suture was made of gut. And all four were unwound gut, pure gut. And in order to support these very low pitches, these strings had to be quite thick. And it made the cello rather unwieldy. And the cello also had to be built quite large, in fact, larger than this. And in about 1680, in Bologna, a city that housed some of the best string makers in Europe, we see the invention of a, or a patenting of a method of wrapping gut with ores, silver, copper, gold. And at that point, because now you can add density to the string, you can make it thinner uh, and maintain those low pitches. And so the lower two strings of the instrument were uh, wrapped with ore, let's say silver. And exactly at that point, once the instrument opens up a little bit, frees up, and, and has more resonance and is much more nimble to handle, at that point we see these very first works written. It's a nice uh, combination of technology and art. And Domenico Gabrielli was right there at the right time to compose these beautiful pieces. So the first sonata and the two richer cars, which car is like a semi-improvised work. Uh, those are among the very first pieces from 1689. The fourth piece was by a student of Gabrielli. His name was Giuseppe Iacchini, great cellist for these beautiful sonatas. And playing those made me think, well, suppose a cellist didn't live in Bologna and didn't have access to this music. Other than composing the music him or herself, what would that cellist do? And I thought, well, would it be possible that they might look backwards to music of earlier generations, music for a bass instrument, and take that music, and what would that music sound like then? And so we decided to play the next three pieces in that vein. So we have three pieces written in the generations before uh, Gabrielli, uh, very famously by Frescobaldi. These are two canzonas for bass instrument, no indication of which instrument. Uh, and following that, we'll play a sonata called Sonata Sopra La Monica. So a sonata after the famous tune La Monica by a German composer, Philipp Friedrich Bodecker. And this is not a piece for cello. 
It's a piece for Dulcian, it's an early bassoon. But it is so beautiful and works so well on the instrument, I can just imagine a cellist in 1680s, 1690s, having heard of it, trying it out himself, and maybe this is what it would have sound like. So I hope you enjoy this next selection. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
Well, we've listened to music from this imaginary 17th century cellist, who being given an instrument that can suddenly perform virtuoso music, searches for such music among some great composers like Frescobaldi and lesser known great composers like Bodecker. Now we shift to the end of the 17th century and come to composers who composed for the actual instrument. The first is lesser known, Nicola Heim, uh, was an Italian who later moved to London, like so many of his compatriots, and uh, excelled at composing opera. Also played the cello and wrote this very interesting cello sonata. And after him, another operatic composer, much better known, Alessandro Scarlatti, who in 1701, for some reason, sat down and composed three cello sonatas for an instrument he did not play. Alessandro, of course, the father of Domenico Scarlatti, the very famous keyboard player. So that will bring us to the end of our exploration of music written for and possibly performed on the newly minted virtuoso cello of the last 20 or so years of the 17th century. We hope you enjoy it. Thank you. 